why speed through water should be set in the ship's radar for collision avoidance, and not speed over ground. But before we proceed, let's go first with their definitions. Speed over the ground is the speed at which a vessel moves relative to the Earth's surface. It represents the actual speed the vessel is covering over the ground, taking into account all external factors such as currents and wind. While speed through water is the speed at which a vessel moves relative to the water it is traveling through. It is not affected by external factors like currents or wind. We use our GPS receiver to determine the ship's speed over the ground, while the Doppler log measures speed through the water. However, the Doppler log can provide more accurate data for speed over the ground when the water depth is between 1 to 200 meters. To understand speed over ground, and speed through water, let's have some scenarios. Assuming this is our ship, Let's make this floating boat as the reference point to determine the speed through water, and we will use this point of the island as our reference point to determine the speed over ground. Assuming the ship is sailing due north with an engine speed of 12 knots, without current and other external forces. The parallel distance traveled by the ship in one hour from the island, which serves as a fixed reference point for determining speed over ground, is 12 nautical miles. Therefore, the GPS receiver displays a speed over ground of 12 knots. On the other hand, the parallel distance traveled by the ship relative to the floating boat, to determine speed through water, is also 12 nautical miles, as no external forces are acting on her. Therefore, the Doppler speed log displays a speed through water of 12 knots as well. If the water below the keel is between 1 to 200 meters, we can set our Doppler speed log to ground track, so that it will display the ship's speed over the ground. On some merchant ships, a written note is posted near the Doppler log, indicating that the speed log should be set to ground track when the depth is between 1 to 200 meters beneath the keel. Let's move on to the second scenario. In this case, the current is favorable with a speed of 2 knots, coming from aft and pushing the ship forward. We'll use the same reference points, the island, to determine speed over ground, and a floating boat, to measure speed through the water. Let's also mark a 12 nautical miles parallel distance from our reference point. The ship is sailing due north with an engine speed of 12 knots. If we measure the parallel distance traveled by the ship from the fixed reference point, it is 14 nautical miles. Compared to the previous scenario where the ship traveled 12 nautical miles, in this case, it traveled 14 nautical miles due to the favorable 2 knot current, causing an increase in a distance of 2 nautical miles. Therefore, the GPS receiver displayed a speed over ground of 14 knots. However, the parallel distance traveled relative to the floating boat remains 12 nautical miles. This is because the floating boat, influenced by the 2 knot current, also moves 2 nautical miles. Since we are using the boat as our reference point to determine speed through water, the speed through water is 12 knots. Therefore, the Doppler speed log displayed a speed through water of 12 knots. In the third scenario, the current is moving in the opposite direction of the ship's heading, at a speed of 2 knots. The ship is maintaining the same course and engine speed as in the previous scenario. The ship traveled a distance of only 10 nautical miles in one hour, relative to the island due to the effect of the adverse current, resulting in a speed over ground of 10 knots. While the parallel distance traveled relative to the floating boat, remains 12 nautical miles. This is because the boat moves 2 nautical miles astern, due to the 2 knot adverse current, resulting in a speed through water of 12 knots. This is the summary of the different scenarios I discussed earlier, with the ship's heading now changed to an easterly direction. These scenarios are based on one hour of steaming time. 
The external forces, such as currents, have no effect on the ship's speed through water. However, they do affect the speed over ground. When the vessel is at anchor, the speed displayed on the Doppler speed log represents the speed or rate of the current. While the GPS receiver shows a speed of zero when the ship is at anchor, the speed log might display two knots, indicating the speed of the current. Now, why should speed through water be used and set in the radar for collision avoidance? Let's consider a scenario to explain. Imagine two vessels approaching each other at night. This vessel is proceeding due north, while this one is proceeding due south. Based on their aspects, these are the navigational lights visible from each vessel. They can both see each other's side lights, the port, and starboard side lights, along with the forward and after masthead light. The forward masthead lights that can be seen from each other positions are aligned or nearly aligned with the after masthead light, indicating they are in a head on situation. Assuming there is a strong easterly current, as both vessels move in a reciprocal course, they both deviate from their planned track due to the effect of easterly current. This ship is making a course made good of 045 degrees true, while the other vessel is making a course made good of 130 degrees true. In this scenario, if the radar is set to speed over ground, it may display a vector that indicates a crossing situation. It occurs because the radar calculates the vessel's movement relative to the ground, including external forces such as tidal currents. These forces affect the vector displayed on the radar PPI, which might show the course made good of each vessel rather than their actual heading. In collision regulation, all collision avoidance actions should be taken based on the aspect of the targets. It means that we base our actions on how we see the other ship and not on how they are moving. Going back to the definition of head-on situation, it occurs when two vessels are approaching each other on reciprocal or nearly reciprocal courses, such that there is a risk of collision if neither vessel alters course. Both vessels will typically see each other's masthead lights aligned or nearly aligned and both side lights. The definition fits our scenario in this video. Looking at the radar, Set to speed over ground, it will give us a false vector, which is a crossing situation, showing us the course made good of both vessels. To handle this situation, we need to set our radar to speed through water, because the displayed vector for each vessel will be based on their movement relative to the water. In this case, our ship would appear to be moving due north, while the other vessel would be moving due south reflecting their true headings without the influence of external forces like currents. Remember that setting our radar to either speed over ground or speed through water does not affect the CPA and TCPA because it is calculated based on the range and bearing of the targets. According to the International Regulations for Preventing Collisions at Sea, CALREGS, Rule 14, Head-on situation, in paragraph A, it is stated that each shall alter her course to starboard so that each shall pass on the port side of the other. That's all for now, I hope you find this video helpful, thank you for watching, bye.